Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we understand what a vector product is, we can multiply two vectors together using the vector product methodology. Now we can start talking about the moment of a force. Now the moment of a force can also be, uh, can also be expressed as the torque. Now in physics we tend to talk about the torque, in engineering we tend to talk about the moment of a force. So what is the moment of a force? Well, here's the symbol that we use. We use the letter M, and sometimes we use a little subscript. And yes, it is indeed a vector. And it turns out the moment of a force is the cross product of the position vector multiplied times the force acting on the object. Now, and by, that by itself doesn't really mean anything yet. So let's say we have a region here on a planar, planar format. We have an object that is able to rotate about this point right there. So we're going to call this point the origin or the O point, we can call it any point, and that is where this little symbol came from. This indicates the location where the object can rotate or pivot. So that's this point right there, and so we indicate that on the symbol M standing for the moment. R is the position vector. It is the vector that's drawn from the point of rotation or pivot from the pivot point to the point where the force actually acts. So here we're going to draw the vector R like that. So there's our vector r, and that goes into our equation right there, and then we apply a force at that location in any direction. So in this case, the force is in the plane that we've drawn here, so that both the r vector and the f vector is in the plane. It doesn't have to be, of course, but just to make it visually easier to see, we've done that. And then notice if we draw a line that continues in the same direction as the r vector, the position vector, we have this line right here, and the force vector then makes an angle with the direction of the position vector. We'll call that angle theta. And so we then claim that the moment is equal to the r vector times the f vector, the position vector times the force vector. And of course, since it's a product, we can use our right-hand rule. Point your fingers in the direction of the r vector, the position vector. Curl your fingers in the direction of the force vector, which is still on the same plane as that object. And then your thumb will point perpendicular away from both the r vector and the f vector, which means perpendicular away from the plane. So let's try to draw that here. So here we have, therefore, what we call the moment about point O, right there. So that's the way we say it. It's the moment about this rotation or pivot point. In this case, it's point O or the origin. Also notice that it's upward away from the plane. So this is perpendicular both to the R vector and perpendicular to the F vector, the force vector. Now, well, of course, if we do R cross F, we'd have a vector of the same magnitude in the opposite direction. Now, since that's a cross product, we can say we can calculate also the magnitude of this vector of the moment. So what would be the magnitude of that? So the magnitude M, the magnitude of the moment, would be equal to the magnitude of the position vector times the magnitude of the force times the sine of the angle between the two. Now, what is the angle between the two? It's, of course, this angle right there. Notice if we draw the R vector over here, you can clearly see that theta then becomes the angle between the two. And you can see as the angle gets bigger, as the angle reaches 90 degrees, the moment will be the largest. As the angle becomes zero, the moment will then go down to zero. Sometimes we also want to look at the moment in a different way. So what we're going to do now is draw what we call the line of action of the force. So if we take the direction of the force and we continue forward like this and backwards like this, we now have drawn what we call the line of action in the force, the line along which the force acts. If we now draw another line, let me use a different color for that, a line from the pivot point to the line of action of the force in such a way that that line reaches the line of action of force perpendicular to the line, meaning at 90 degree angles. Let's do that right here. So that this is a right angle and this is a right angle right there then this is called the shortest distance from the pivot point to the line of action of the force, and we we'll call that d. Now let's find an equation, or let's find a way to express d. Now we have a triangle right here, and notice that this angle here must be the same as this angle over here. So I can duplicate the angle on the other side. These are opposite angles, theta, and then d becomes the opposite side to this angle, and let's see here, and then R is the hypotenuse. So therefore, we can then write 
that d d is equal to the hypotenuse r times the sine of the angle theta. Now if we come back over here, notice we have an r and a sine of theta. If I then rewrite this, I can say this is equal to f times r sine theta. And then if I replace this portion of the equation by d, that's the shorter distance from the pivot point to the line of action of the force, then we can say that this is equal to the force times that distance. So either way, we can find the magnitude of the moment by multiplying the force times the shortest distance from the pivot point to the line of action of the force, or simply we can find the magnitude of the moment by multiplying the magnitude of the position vector times the magnitude of the force times the sine of the angle between them. Either way will get you the exact same result. That's what we mean by the moment. Now you may say, well, what does the moment really mean? Well, the moment has to do with a force applied at the distance away from an object that can rotate. For example, this may help us. Let's say that I draw a bolt. I guess this is an eight-sided bolt. Let's say that I put a, um, a wrench on that bolt because I want to go ahead and either tighten it or loosen it. So there's my wrench. And let's go like this. So let's say I want to tighten the bolt. I want to turn it like this and tighten the bolt. Well, if I apply a force over here, I will apply a moment to that bolt. And so the bolt, of course, can rotate like this. And so this here would be the distance from the point of rotation to the line of action of the force. There's the line of action of the force. And then here would be the force that's applied. And then the moment applied to the bolt would be simply be the product of R times F. Now, of course, we already know that sometimes it's very hard to tighten bolts, it's very hard to loosen bolts, and then pull in the, push in the opposite direction, I can then try to loosen bolts. What can I do if I just can't tighten or just can't loosen the bolt? Well, I can increase the moment by moving that force over to a large, larger distance away, because remember, the moment is in a way the force that you apply to rotational motion. And so, if you then move the force over here, that you have a larger position, position vector, then D also becomes larger, the moment becomes larger, it becomes easier to tighten or loosen the, belt, the, the bolt. So it, it, it's kind of a, the way to look at the moment is a force applied to an object to make it rotate. And either you can increase the moment by making the force larger, or by making the moment arm, as we call it, larger, the position vector distance from the point of rotation to where we're applying the force. And so hopefully that gives you a better idea of what a moment of a force is. And this is the best way to look at it.